know this is CleanTech Business Club after almost two years yes. of uh, being closed. Absolutely. Actually being closed, being so far, but always being connected, yes? And being active. We and were being very active. active in this time, and especially you were very active No, no, in this no. Time. We are, everybody was, was so active, yes? <laughs> and Ike, I would like to thank you first of all for, you know, uh, when this pandemic started, that you agreed to chair our first uh, Clean Tech Week in convention. And actually we had 150 yes. leaders around the world. And we put it together in only two weeks. It yes, was yes. amazing. It was the amazing. first ever virtual event for the Clean yes. Tech industry. Yes. We had Nobel, Nobel laureates, we yes. had uh, princes, ministers together with us. It All was the a fantastic program yes. and we had good attendance. Yes, and uh, I think the most important out of this was that we came up with the declaration 2030. Exactly, yes, exactly. right in which uh, we united and joined forces in order to change the world by 2030 because yeah. we think that this is the actually possible date yes to make and as a matter of fact you know this is the acceleration of what was up to then mm -hmm. up to then everybody talked about 2050 to get decarbonized but now our new results show and the ipcc has mm -hmm. uh, reported this we need to really change the world by 2030 2035 the latest so our declaration really gave yes. this a big push. So, so we are for 2030 and eventually some margin, you know, yes. we can do. Yes? But, uh, but the need, goal is 30. We need to start acting now and I think we observe it everywhere. Just look at the results of the last elections in Germany. In Germany we will have soon a government which includes the Green Party and in France President Macron is as well very, very well aware of it. Uh, in, in Brussels we have von der Leyen, the, president of the commission, the Green New Deal in the United States with President Biden. Things are moving. John Kerry takes care for this issue. So we really feel the global wave is starting now. Asia, Africa, yes. And Absolutely. What, what is great that in our club we have people from over 30 countries and uh, next year we would like to have at least 100 countries involved. Yeah, and our club stands for the fact that this disruptive transformation to renewable CO2-free energy is not just a burden, actually it's not a burden at all. It's accelerator. It is a big opportunity and accelerator. Right now in Germany we are complaining about increasing energy prices. Why are energy prices increasing? Because of oil and gas. If we would today already be in 2030, this would not happen because the sun doesn't send any bills, as we know. And once we have installed our energy system based on solar and wind power and other renewable power, then there will be no increases in prices. We can predict how prices develop for 20 years down the road, which is good for industry. Industry can put the energy price as a very solid, well-known number into their uh, plannings. And therefore, the economy will have a huge advantage after having done this transformation. Another thing uh, which was also very important, so we noticed uh, during our e-convention that the world will not be like it was in the past and we built our club 2.0, yes? Exactly. So we'll have now a live platform but also a virtual platform which will serve us 24-7 uh, to even better, you know, uh, transfer our ideas and also to help uh, to grow the business, yes? Because at the end of the day we need business meaningfulness but also we need joy yeah? so yes. hopefully yesterday yes. we had first time joy yes. our dinners our yes. meetings uh, together our uh, together we are stronger meetings uh, here at Ines actually and uh, thank you so much Anis and uh, Ines team yes and we don't forget the wonderful gala dinners in the past and I'm looking forward for the next one maybe in Abu Dhabi in, Abu Dhabi, in January yes. in January and especially that it will be joined together with the ceremony for World Clean Tech Awards and also, I can thank you so much, uh, officially, yes, of course, for becoming chair of this <laughs> of these awards. And uh, what is great that in the past it was Solar Future Today awards that we are giving to the visionary individuals who are impacted actually this you know solar boom. And now, as we are a clean tech business club, we are recognizing all clean tech, yes, yes. And also in the past it was for the individuals, but now we decided that we would like to also award the companies well established, yes, yes. which are paving, you know, this uh, way for the disruption. Exactly, this clean tech the event. icebreakers. Yes, and also for the startups, yes, because, yes. because as we discussed with Ike, also we created this idea of clean tech startup hub that we will be discussing later with Anis. Yes. But uh, Ike was one of the 
Professor Weber was one of the initiators also, also of this idea because actually the disruption and the screen tech decade will be driven by the new disruptive technologies, yes? And that's exactly. why uh, the big role of startups will be here, yes? And okay. technologies combined with networking, because exactly. networking is so important for any business to flourish, you know? You need to know the right people in finance, in technology, innovative people who uh, bring in new technologies, and this is what our platform can bring exactly. together. And what is interesting also that we invented actually age to age. Big thanks to Michael Bermer, who was one of the guys who brought this idea. And uh, now thanks to uh, Dave Rene, yes, Absolutely. former president of ISIS, because he brought idea, Thomas, we are actually blockchain, yes. human blockchain. So instead <laughs> of uh, being connected uh, virtually, uh, we are connected through our DNA. Yes? <laughs> yes. And everybody who is in our club, all the companies who are joining, all the partners, like uh, Kurt, who is now uh, our partner, for the media in Germany who is uh, filming this, uh, this interview, uh, we are connected through our DNA. Yes? Absolutely. And as a matter, it turns out that we have a lot of joint DNA to share. Yes, exactly. And also we would like to invite everybody, you know, with the positive DNA who shares uh, the vision of the club to join us. And now just uh, a little bit about our uh, future initiatives. So first is uh, World Cleantech Awards. So as I was mentioning, we will have the first ceremony in uh, January. But the official launch will be on the first ever Cleantech Forum together with ISIS, International Solar Energy Society. The forum will be held at Solar World Congress. It's a virtual congress and I'm uh, very pleased I serve as the uh, scientific chairman of this congress. It's organized by ISIS, the World Solar Energy Society. And uh, we decided because of Corona, we have to make it an all virtual congress. But with the experience that we have from the Cleantech Business Club from last year, it should be a very successful event. And I am very happy because uh, this will be for the first time when together with ISIS, uh, we organize the forum between science, industry and finance. Yes. yes. And we'll be discuss about the joint roadmap, you see, in order to scale up together. Yes, exactly, because only the combination of science, industry and finance allows really to go as quickly as we need to have a chance to avoid the catastrophic climate disaster which would come if we are not quick enough. And also, as we always say, together we are stronger. Together we are really the strongest and I think we have to be aware that there are retarding forces from the old fossil industry and our industry is not yet as big and powerful as the old fossil industry. Think about companies like Exxon, Shell and so forth. But because we are a network, we are together as strong and this is really what we have to be. Exactly. And um, at 12 we are meeting with um, Markus, who is the founder of InterSolar. We'll be discussing about partnership. Markus Elsa. Yes. yes. Yesterday I met him and he was really released, you know, after two years, you know, yes. of this stressful situation, of not uncertainty, not knowing what's happening. And now I, I saw he was very happy, yes, because actually, yes. Uh, I think uh, InterSolar really uh, this year, uh, you know, it was above expectations. Yesterday it was so crowded, yeah? Absolutely, you know, it's the number of halls is fewer than we had in the past, but the intensity of the interactions is higher than we had it in the past. So. I think uh, even all the uh, attendants from industry are very pleased with what is going on in these last three days. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important that it's in Europe and ICA, uh, besides uh, being active in uh, Cleantech Business Club, we have also uh, initiated uh, the European Solar Manufacturing Council. Yes? Can you yes. tell us more a bit, you know, where, where you are? The issue is the following. We all know that solar energy will be one of the two big pillars of the future energy world, being carried by wind energy and solar energy. But what is less known is right now only 0.4% of the world's solar cell production is in Europe. And I think this is not healthy, this is not good. So we really need to establish again, to re-establish solar cell manufacturing, solar cell uh, solar module manufacturing all along the value chain in Europe. And this is really the task of the European Solar Manufacturing Council. I'm very pleased to chair this together with Gaëtan Masson. And we together really are now working on pushing for a European uh, IPSI, which stands for an um, uh, important project of common European interest. Because in Europe, if the governments want to support a new industry, 
they need to have the backing of such an IPSI because European rules don't allow to support specific technologies. So this is why we now bring together all solar industry in Europe to make this joint effort to go to the member governments and to go to Brussels to re-establish uh, solar industry in Europe and the IPSI will be an important step. We do have successful IPSITs in the battery cell field. Now billions of dollars have been invested in battery cell manufacturing and we will have to do exactly the same thing in solar cell manufacturing. Also, some of our colleagues say, well, solar cell manufacturing makes so much sense. In reality, we don't need government support. And of course, this is right. But what we need is government interest and setting the right re regular boundary conditions. And therefore, the regular framework has to be supportive. And therefore, I think it is very important to establish this IPSI because this brings this topic on the level that it deserves. So I think things are going very well and in the next couple of months we will see big progress in that. But I think it's great, yes, because actually I remember at that time when I was at EPR 2004 or something like this, actually Europe was the heart, yes? yes. Europe and Japan, yeah? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and at the end heart. of the day, uh, Europe almost exited, yes, from the production. Yeah. And now I think it's so important to have also the production in Europe, yes? I mean, the reason was simply that Japan, uh, the Chinese government was smart enough to uh, grant credit 40 guarantees. Billion, uh, 40 billion program. Yeah, credit guarantees. Whereas in Europe, there was no support for the solar industry whatsoever. So it was not a miracle that suddenly China got number one. It was really that the Chinese government, better than the European governments, recognized the relevance, the strategic relevance for the future energy system. So I think we have to give credit for this to the Chinese government of 2008 because they really put this on the right track. We in Europe are now running behind 10 years later, but it's absolutely essential that we really establish PV production in Europe along the full value chain. Okay, I guess. So I think uh, that uh, this was that. I, I'm quite surprised we are not so stressed, yeah? We didn't have so much experience uh, recently as just, yes. uh, just virtual, but uh, it was uh, very good. And I would like to thank you once again, I yes, for, for big all pleasure. All and all I'm looking and, forward uh, to the restart of real meetings, yes, person exactly. to person meetings. And it's soon we will pleasure. meet in Berlin. Also. Yes, yes, exactly. Okay, so thank you so much. Uh, that was Cleantech Business Club speaking with uh, uh, Professor Ike Weber, who is a uh, chair of Ford Cleantech Awards and uh, one of the uh, key leaders in our club. So see you next time. Thank you so much. Bye bye.